Will from Elton Kent, Jamili from Paranaki in the Philippines. That's the first surprise. Simon didn't realise it was a southpaw. I wonder if he can't own you that. From all accounts, he's a, an aggressive southpaw. He can dig a bit. We shall see. Cantwell not known for his fearsome punch, but uh, work rate. Yep, and a uh, fairly tall opponent he has too. Up, this could uh, already, it's looking like it could be a little awkward for, for Mickey. A southpaw, a tall southpaw. And a southpaw who is looking to throw heavy shots in the first round, so he doesn't lack confidence. He looks very relaxed, he's very at home in there, the little Filipino, doesn't he? He sure does. He has a very big uh, win when he won the title at the uh, Intercontinental WBL title against Petra Balden. Won that in the first round and then uh, defended it technical uh, K.O. of Lolita Lareo of the Philippines in August. He really is very tall and uh, the Filipinos are they're famous for uh, the amount of weight they can drag off their fighters so you wonder what this fellow walks around at in between fights. He's uh, so much taller than Cantor. The first feeling you get about Jamili, he certainly looks uh, competent, doesn't he? He's quite at home in there, he's, he's been launching some solid shots straight away in the first round. And uh, that little relaxed look about him. Yes, he's got a relaxed demeanor, moves well. Very smooth indeed. Not a lot of action yet. Cunt uh, was just trying to measure the south pod jab. He's just trying to see what kind of jab it is. Does it always come straight? Is it going to turn into a hook? Hopefully he finds that the best method of getting past it. Because that's the first battle with the south pod and the orthodox. It's the battle of the jabs, first of all. Good work from Jamili. Yeah, the body shots there, uh, look, uh, certainly the, the more solid, the more quality punches have come from the visitor so far. And here he, he looks like a little tiger there, ready to pounce. Very confident looking kid, this one. Well, he's been lying his record of eight wins, five losses and a draw. He's making a spectacular start here against Cantwell. Nasty moments, you can see he's cut on the bridge of his nose, is Cantwell. That's a very, very good round for Eric Jamili. Arrogant start. And, uh, work to do for Jimmy Tibbs and Frank Black, tending to that nose in the early stages. And that knocks you out your stride. Yeah, that's the last thing you need uh, y Your last chance of winning a world title, which obviously it must be, and you come back from after the first round with uh, a cut. I mean, wh whether or not it's a bad cut, it's the obviously the last thing you need. And it wasn't really a good round for Cantwell, quite opening. Yeah, we saw the uh, the stats there on body shots, 13, but there's the way the uh, nose got cut. Scything blow. Just the look of confidence about this little Call thing that upsets you, just alarms you a little bit. Heavy grease around the nose of Mickey Campbell as he comes out for the sixth round. If Mickey can just believe that his corner can keep him in there for the 12 rounds, then he can settle down and box his own style. Then that'll give him a chance of winning here. But if, it, if he continues to be so reckless, then the, the damage is only going to be made worse and he's going to fall in it into this, this fellow's uh, plan. This fellow's so cool. And for a 20 year old, amazingly cool. Cantwell just needs the confidence of knowing that his time is not limited, that he's going to be staying in there. And we 
see the swelling on that nose as well, Simon. That must be interfering with his breathing. You see him opening his mouth now and again. What a problem right away in the first round, too. And again, can't be forcing things. This is better. He's making Jamili miss now. He's not quite so reckless. That you can see it has to think every move, they can't afford any more punches. That, that was a nice little left took that looked to have a little effect on Jamili there. Yes, he looked flustered for the first time. Now then. The punches seem to catch him on the ear and just seem to trouble him just momentarily. And Campbell's making him miss now. He didn't miss that one. Uh, he'll be right as he came in. This but is a better round for Campbell so far. Punches taken on the glove. Campbell looking much more effective now, that on the side. This is more like it. Jamini looks to have slowed down a little. Campbell looking a bit more mature now, maybe the maturity and the strength. Maybe we've reached this stage now that Campbell can start taking over a little bit, but he must get confidence that the injury can be handled by his corner. He must forget the injury and just stick to his boxing. I mean, the referee hasn't hounded him, he hasn't stopped to look at it again, he hasn't hassled him in the corner. So he better just get it in his mind that everything's okay as far as injury is concerned. Just stick to this boxing, good calculated boxing. See, Jamelia really should be raising the pace to stay with Cantwell. He's not doing that. That is a good sign for Cantwell. Better round for Mickey Cantwell. Turning into a really absorbing bout. It looked uh, devastating the start for Cantwell, but slowly but surely he's mustered all that experience and maybe he's turning this around. Well, I think he has it in his mind now. Forget the injury. The injury made him box badly for a couple of rounds. He was out for a knockout, and that's not Mickey's style. Settle down now and get himself back into this fight. Round 10. Across his opponent with a much more confident look, as if to say, You may have hurt me, and you may have injured me, but now I'm after you. You would have expected Jamili's corner to tell him to raise the pace. He seems to want to counter, that's not how you win world titles away from home. You want to win world titles, you've got to go out and get them. So you'd expect maybe Jamili to raise his game a little bit. Jab again. We're both Come doing on. a fair bit of missing Keep here. Up, I, I don't see the, the reason for that. I think the boards bounced off each other. I don't think that was a low punch. Yes, I thought there might have been a couple earlier, but not then. of referee, I don't believe that. That has just cost little Jamili around and done big things for Mickey Cantwell. That, that one little incident gets Mickey Cantwell right back into the driving seat here. And the uh, fans at the back, who won't really have seen that, but it, it actually ran it round the neck and he swung him round. That was a terrible, that it was a knockout. terrible piece of referee that was disgraceful. But good news for little Mickey, I suppose. Well, it may well have given him a point. 
certainly a point he wouldn't have got anywhere else. Exactly, so that's how the, the way things are going. It's, it's looking like a 10-8 round for, for Nicky Campbell. And it's brought his uh, supporters into it more, given him the confidence, and you can see it's disrupting the composure that... Well, Jamili, Jamili's work has had the same quality about it in the last couple of rounds as it did have in the first three rounds. So I think Camp will begin to make an impression on him, and maybe, maybe we've seen the best of Jimmy Lee here. Maybe he's got nothing more to offer than what we've already seen, and maybe Camp can just stick with what he's doing and just kind of grit his way away here to victory. He's gritting his teeth here, all right. But he got caught coming in, and Jamili knows that this is a uh, pretty important stage here. Campbell getting real success. Cantwell's digging some good punches in here. And a good round for Cantwell. And with the knockdown, although we don't agree with it, we have to score it. The referee's the, the man, he decides. So that's the round that really turns it around for Mickey Cantwell. And there's the uh, effect of those that have come up from Basingstoke. Sorry, from uh, Eltham and Kent to see their man. And this is the key moment of the fight. Now watch this. I mean, that was a, an arm round the neck. The, the, the glove did not land in target. The, the wrist landed on his neck and knocked him off balance. Here it goes. No way. In your wildest dreams with a, a punch, threw him off balance, and the referees uh, deemed that a knockdown. Good news for Cantwell, really, but uh, there's, a, there's a key scene going on in the corner now of Mickey Cantwell, and the referee's gone over, and uh, there's some heated conversation. Are they going to let him carry on? They are. But it looked dicey. There's a doctor in there as well. And for a moment, it looked like it might be up. Maybe there's only one round more left in it. We have to see. He certainly needs the same kind of success he had in the last round. Well, the referee's going over at the end of every round to look at that cut. It hasn't hassled the corner. But uh, the, the doctor up there, that obviously could be bad news. So it's getting nearer and nearer. 10 8 round for Campbell. And in fact, he goes into a lead on. Uh, on Jim's card at the moment. Certainly psychologically he has the advantage right now, but will the cut prevent Cantwell from winning this world title? You wonder if he's been told this is the last round because once again he's been careless and been picked off by Jimmy Lee. Walking towards that South Pod jab and hook. I wonder if he knows this is the last round, Simon. And suddenly, Jamili's picking up the pace, he's picking Cantwell off. Cantwell struggling in the corner, and the crowd in the corner willing him to get out of it, but he's taking some leather now. Suddenly, the fight switches again. See, as soon as Cantwell becomes sloppy and, and goes looking to, to do damage, that is, is when he ends up with his second prize here. See, things were going nicely. We don't know what took place in that corner. Maybe he's been sent out for the last round, but uh, he's gone back to this overly aggressive, uh, sloppy stuff, and he's running into trouble. And the uh, punches that are landing for Jamelia are making the cut that much worse. I can't believe if it was close to going in the last round that it's going to carry. Now, back he goes once more. The doctor comes up once more. The doctor must stop this. The doctor must stop this. I'll be very, very surprised if it's over. Has, yep, it's stopped. over. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Take no credit away from Eric Jamelia. He fought very, very well. But just when Campbell looked to be getting something going here, the fight's over. Jamili has won the World Strawweight Championship, and Cantwell, for the second time, when he's fought for the title, has come off second best. A real sense of anticlimax. It was such a well, good well, fight. A dreadful start for, uh, for Cantwell. I mean, being cut in the first round was terrible. The good thing about Mickey Cantwell, he has Frank Warren behind him, uh, a promoter who is known worldwide. And if anyone can maybe secure a return here, Frank Warren can do it. He's had two world title fights already. Maybe Frank Warren can get a third because he was well in that fight. He had turned it around and I had the, the fight fairly even when the end came. Terrible luck. He's 34 years old now. I wonder if he's got another rise to a world title left in him. Only his 19th fight. Not exactly overextending himself as a pro, but of course a big amateur record. He was a, a top amateur for eight years. Maybe this is the end. We'll have to wait well, and see. Simon, Frank Warren enjoys a good association with the WBO, so that's not out of the question. that The fight was on injury. It was an even fight. See, just at, towards the end, he was becoming sloppy again, looking for the knockout, and that is when he's been picked off by Jimmy Lee.
See, look at the state of that nose. Ter terrible injury. Terrible injury. And that's where uh, Mark Nelson came in to finally stop it and the end of Cantwell's dream. Ladies and gentlemen, after 1 minute 22 seconds of the 8th round, the referee has stopped the contest with Mickey Cantwell in no position to continue. The winner and new WBO strawweight champion, Eric Jamili. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation to a very, very brave man indeed. Your appreciation, please, for Mickey Cantwell. And Mickey conceding afterwards that that would be his last world title shot. Uh, John, what did you make of that? Disappointing for him, obviously. Very disappointing. And a little uh, kerfuffle today at the weigh-in because the champion, Clinton McKenzie, the one in the black trunks, came to the scales. 30